this morning to get into our sermon this morning. As you all know, it is Father's Day, and I failed to say Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers yet. So, Happy Father's Day, fathers, and I'm sure all your sons and daughters appreciate you just as much as I do. Um, you know, I've only been here for two years, but I really can see the love that mostly that all these fathers that I know here have for their children and for their church. And to speak on Father's Day is interesting because I really don't know much about being a father. I, don't, I know that might surprise some of you. I like to think I know everything sometimes, but when it comes to being a father, I'm kind of clueless, I guess. Maybe it's because I have not a father yet. I do have a father, though. And so today I figured let's look at stuff a little bit different than we usually do on Father's Day. Let's look at the fathers from the children's perspective. Let's look at our Father. Let's look at our fathers and examine them. On Wednesday night, we had our middle school youth. I forgot to mention that. And I don't know if that would belong in praises or prayer concerns, but we had middle school youth this week, and there was seven fifth to eighth graders there, and it, it was a good time. At the in the end, it was a good time. It, I think at the beginning we had about four rules, and by the end of the night we had about two hundred. And you just you just got to keep making them, I guess. That's all right, though. But anyways, during our middle school youth, our breakaway youth, we had an activity where I just gave everybody a card and said, I asked them to write one word that described their father. And the number one answer I got was hardworking. There was, I think there was four, four people who put hardworking. And I was like, that's, that's a good tribute right there, a father who's hardworking. Then I got a few that were cool. I got one that said sports which I'm assuming means athletic. One that said loving. And so, those are sensitive thoughts there to think of a father as somebody who's hardworking, who loves us, who's athletic, who shares their athleticism with us, who's cool, who's not embarrassing, but the cool father. Growing up, I always idolized my father. He was my superhero, I thought. I remember I'd come home from school, we'd done an activity on our superhero or something, and I came home, and my, the teacher had told my parents at the parent-teacher conference that we were doing this activity or something, and they were excited to see what superhero I was writing about, because I was never really into superheroes. And my mom, I think, was a little disappointed when I came home, and she saw that I wrote a two-page paper about my dad, basically, being my superhero. But he was. He took me to work with him. He owned his own construction business, so there was many days where it was bring your son to work day. And to see my father work construction was just something I never knew how he did. Never knew, understood how tough he really was. I'd seen the man put a screw too far through a board and then just duct tape over it where he hit his finger and say, ah, that's all right. He's a man beyond man for my thought. And I thank God for him. But today I want to share just two of the many characteristics my God, my my father has shared with me, my earthly father, that is Steve, that he shared with me. So today let's turn to Luke chapter 15, verses 20 to 24. This is the first characteristic that I feel it takes to become a godly father, to be a father that God has called all of us men to be to our children. I say our children again. I don't have children. I'm not trying to surprise anyone here. No children still. But in Luke chapter 15, verses 20 through 24, we find the story of the parable of the lost son. And we're going to focus in on the part where the son returns. For those of you, I'm sure many of us know, this is the story. The son came to his father and said, I want my inheritance now. I don't want to wait till you die. I want it now, and I want to take my half. I want all the money, I want to sell it all, I want to get all the money, and I want to go to Indianapolis and have all the fun in the world that there can be had. And so this kid did it. And here's the story. We're going to pick the story up as he's pondering what to do with his life after he spent all the money he had. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion 
for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The son returns. He didn't know what was going to happen. It was his last effort, he thought. He didn't know what to do. On the streets, no money, no place to live, no one to love, no one to call a friend. He decides to go home where he'll be treated as a servant, he is suspected. He says, surely my father will just treat me as a servant. His servants are treated better than I am here on the streets. But to his surprise, when he comes home, he doesn't even make it home. I don't know if you guys caught that part of the story. But it says that he was a far way off still. I like to just imagine it, you know. The son is returning from the city. The father sees him coming down the hill a few hundred yards away, across the sheep pastures. The father sees him out the window, and he, the father lifts up his robe, and he runs to his son, where then he embraces him. The father didn't wait for him to get to the door and then ridicule him and tell him, I, so, I told you so. I told you you'd waste your money. He didn't wait for him to give him a lesson. But he did give him a lesson. He gave him a lesson in love. He taught the son unconditional love that day. He said, no matter what you do, son, I'm going to love you. No matter how much of my inheritance you take, whether you spend it all or not, you're my son. And at the end of the day, I will still love you the same. And I had to share a story from my life. That is similar to this. Not really. I didn't get my inheritance. But me and my brother were just over a year apart. And so, as brothers do, we fight. Especially when we were younger, we fought a lot. In fact, we had a daily ritual after school. We'd come home, ride the bus home for an hour, get off the bus, go straight inside, grab a snack. We'd share a sack. We would be the only ones home. Mom and Dad would be at work. And our little sister would be at the babysitter at this time. She was too young for school. We'd split a snack, then we'd go outside and we'd play basketball. And as many of you have noticed, I'm, I'm quite tall. So basketball was my sport, and I loved to play basketball with him because I could beat him even though he was older than me. And then after basketball would happen, we'd argue for a few minutes, and then he'd say, let's play football. Because I was really skinny, and he wasn't, and he was stronger. and So we'd play tackle football. And then we'd argue some more. And then we'd usually go inside and finish our chores really, really fast before Mom got home or Dad got home. One day, however, I don't remember the specifics, but we got into an argument. Then the argument turned into a fight, and me being the younger one ran away real fast, and I hid inside and locked all the doors. (laughs) And then my brother was standing outside our bedroom window, yelling at me to let him in, and I think I gave him a na-na-na-na-boo-boo spiel. And I don't remember what he had in his hand, but he threw it at me right through the window. We went about three days before we told Mom and Dad our window was busted in our bedroom window. We didn't know how long we could keep it up. It was getting a little cold in there. Eventually they found out, and we thought we were done. We thought they'd never love us again. We busted the window. We were wrong. They still love us. They actually did right after they found out. didn't show love too well to us, but they loved us. <laughs> they loved us nonetheless. They still stand by us today when we even make mistakes today. They still tucked us in at night. Still give us kisses on our forehead. They still loved us. Even though we did this really bad thing, they still loved us. That's one, one characteristic of a godly father. It's one who can show love no matter the circumstance. One who will love you till the day is over, to all your days of your life. The other is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. 
This is just after receiving the Ten Commandments. Big part in Israel's life here. Life of the Israelites. Here's what it says. Deuteronomy 6, 5-9 Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. God says these commandments given you today. Impress them on your children. Impress them on your children. Make an imprint on your child's life. That they know God. They know the commandments. He says to think about them when you lie down and you get up. It should be the first thing we think about and the last thing we think about every day is God. You know, that's something special. It's a father who can lead his family to Christ. A father who can answer all the questions that his children, his wife may have about who is God? Who is Jesus? What has He done for me? That's a special person when a father can do that. My father, to share another story, he taught me not just to be like Steve Sandiford. He taught me to be better than that. He wanted me to be better than himself. My dad taught me to know Jesus. He taught me to be like him. He raised the bar for me. He said, I just don't want you to be as good as me. I want you to be better. And as I told you, ever since I was young, all I ever wanted to do was be like my father. He was the superhero. And so one day when I was at work with my father, we were hammering nails. And he always told me I always hit my finger so much because I didn't use the right hand because I'm left-handed and it's not the right hand. And one day he hit his finger. And he said what he said after hitting his finger. And I was like, ah, oh, that's what you say when you hit your finger. <laughs> okay. And so a little later I, I hit my finger. And I said what he said. And he looked at me. And he made it very clear that that's what he says. That's not what I say. He made it very clear he doesn't want me to be like him in those ways. He made it very clear he wants me to be more like God in those ways. So it was clear to me that my father, no matter how much I wanted to be like him, he wanted me to be so much more than him. So much more than just a superhero because he was strong. So much more than just a superhero because he could drive a nail in one hit. So much more because the duct tape was a man's band-aid. He wanted me to be a man who could lead kids to Christ. Who could tell my children one day about their father in heaven. Tell my children, that's alright. It's going to be okay because God loves you. That's what my father had in store for me. That's what my God in heaven had in store for me. They had special plans for me. They had special plans for all of us. Being a father, I'm sure, is no easy task. I'm sure sometimes you just want to whip the kids, especially if they acted like I did when I was young. But it's a special task that God has called us all to do. Some of us are fathers, some of us aren't. God has called us to these lives, He's called us to be fathers. It's called us to be uncles. It's called us to be friends, brothers. Being a man of God is something special. Being a man of God is something worth doing. God loves us all. And He set us aside something special. I have this video Derek's going to play in just a moment that perhaps describes a little bit of a father's life. I thought it was quite comical. It's by the skit guy, so if you just watch the video... And we'll close after that. Hey kids, mom needs more help inside. Hey, how many kids do you have? Three. Three? Yeah. That 
is a good number. Whoa, whoa. Um, let's just concentrate on this one for now. <laughs> hey, what's it like being a dad? Mr. Clams has been sleeping for two days, Daddy. Goodbye, Mr. Clams. No. All right, just slow down a little Dad, bit. Stop yelling at me. I don't think that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, and that is why we always wear our seatbelt. And that's the birds and the bees. So proud of you, son. Run, huh? Run, it's gonna blow! Have I told you lately? I know, Dad. You love me. You tell me all the time. Actually, I was going to tell you I think you're beautiful inside and out. Whatever. You are disgusting. Yeah, Dad, you are disgusting. This right here goes to your future, this right here goes to you, and this right here goes to God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How much does God get? What's wrong, beautiful? ever broke up with me. Thank you, Lord. He's such a jerk. He broke up with me on a text message. He just replied. Dad, I can't believe you! <laughs> Thanks, Dad. He didn't deserve you. He didn't deserve you. One, two... That's all right. You can stop it there, Derek. I believe that was the last little snip of it right there. And it ends and he goes back to the yard sale and the guy looks back at him and says, what's it like being a father? And he says, how much time do you have? How much time do we have? If I wanted to share every story about my father that I'd love to share, that are my favorite We'd be up here for a while, and maybe some of them shouldn't be shared up here. <laughs> but a father, a father mimics the father. A father on this earth is a comforter. 
a protector, one who guides, one who instructs, one who loves unconditionally, one who teaches about God, one who can just be there as he was in the video for his daughter, one who's an encourager. So many characteristics to being a father. There, I could name them all. Could not. So I ask you today, children that are here, most of them are upstairs now. I ask you today, fathers, wives, what characteristics do you have? What characteristics could you work on? From what I've seen, we're really good at a lot of them. And we lack out a lot of them as men of God. But all in all, God did a pretty good job at putting us all here together. And I praise Him for that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for this day. Lord, I ask that Your blessing is on this this room, Lord, this church, those traveling, those that are extended here, Lord. I ask that You allow us to reflect, Lord. Reflect on what it is, Lord, that makes us men of God, makes us women of God, children of God, Lord. Ask us, let us think about those qualities, Lord, and seek those qualities so we can serve You better, Lord. I ask this in Your name.